All right, I'm um, getting a little bored with the uh, miniatures, so I thought I'd build a, a model kit real quick. And uh, this is the Dragon uh, Japanese Type 95 Hago Light Tank. Um, I reviewed this in a Scale Model Addict video, which probably by the time you see this, that will be uh, out. Um, it's a great little kit, and what I'm going to try to do is build this as fast as possible. I was thinking maybe trying to get it done in two nights, but um, with all the washing and weathering, I think that's going to take a couple extra nights. But uh, build one night, paint it the next, weathering third and fourth night, maybe fifth. We'll see. All right, let's go. Speed build. All right, here we go. Tank is mostly together. Um, this is the second night. I thought I would get a bit further along on this thing before now, but um, I forgot to include the fact that I have a job. So uh, I think I already shot my three, four day uh, time limit out the window here. Anyway, I built most of it yesterday, and then I uh, let everything dry because it was, uh, you know, I didn't want to touch it while pieces were still soft, but the main pieces are together. Everything went together perfectly, although I had to fix something today. Um, 
the way the muffler goes in, and there's two tiny holes here where the big piece fits in, and then there's it goes into the engine through here, two little tiny holes. And it was a real problem trying to line everything up. I thought I had them glued in place, and then I realized that this piece had to be uh, more flush into the hull, so I had to re-wet that with uh, liquid cement and uh, plastic cement and push that in place. Also, I should remember this from uh, all the kits I used to build a while back. Um, all the little mounting holes for these small little tools, you really don't need them since they're going to be covered up. I was trying to push the pins into place and end up bending various small pieces here because they are so delicate. So either widen the holes or simply cut off the, um, the mounting pins and glue this into place. But I managed to fix that up. Uh, also, I left the guns off because I'm going to be painting the camo scheme as uh, shown on the box and I thought the guns would just get in the way uh, when I do the masking. So, now we're going to do the tracks. Normally I leave tracks off and paint them separately, but um, I'm going to just try putting them on this time for you know, no particular reason. Though I do want to model some sag into them. Uh, oh, here's something interesting. This little section here uh, says uh, check uh, standard track length, and I, I thought it was telling you what length you need to uh, you need because it says here you know if it's these are generic tracks they give you in like um, all the Japanese kits so they don't fit every single tank. Oh, let me get this in the camera frame. Where is it? There it is. I thought this little check standard length track here was telling you how much to cut off, and I almost did, but uh, I figured, oh, let me test the length first. That's not what this means. Um, so actually, I don't have to cut anything off of these uh, links. They're perfectly the right length. Actually, I had to stretch them slightly to get them the right length. But anyway, now is the tedious part of putting these damn things on. I hate this. So I'm going to be going around with... Uh, a super glue and toothpick and is working my way around gluing this down to every possible place so I don't get giant bulges everywhere. Alright, well that was uneventful and uh, fairly painless. Tracks are in place. Um, now the next step is I want to put a little track sag. The problem with the rubber tracks is that, um, well, they're rubber, and they're just too stiff. They don't have the proper sag that a track uh, should have. So I've been meaning to try this out for a while, and I can never do it because I always end up gluing the holes, hole halves together, and then I can't do this. Um, there is a trick where you take a small pin vise, and you drill very, actually I need to get a smaller bit, very tiny holes through the tank out to the other side and you drill it so it's you know pressing the track down slightly and then you take a thin piece of wire and you run it through uh, out to the other side and the idea being that um, once it's painted you won't be able to see the wire so um, that's what I'm going to be trying next hopefully Ah, you know, that's a good thing I just tested. Um, obviously I could run it here because this is here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I could run it here because that fender. Running it here would be a bit more obvious. I could run it back. There we go. Um, that worked out pretty good. Um, if you cannot see the little brass rods I ran through to get the track sag, then my job is done. Um, you may see that one. That one's looking, I think that's just the light reflecting. I'm going to trim that one down. So, there they are. Very simple. Just drill a hole through uh, and then run the rod through. This one is a little crooked. I think it's better if it's straighter. Um, but yeah, I think this works a little bit better on larger scale kits, not 72nd, but uh, it's still not too bad. 
All right, uh, from here, I have to glue these in place. Uh, I'm also gonna add, glue some weight of some sorts inside the tank here. Uh, I like to do that because um, since the track is this rubber stuff, um, it doesn't always sit flush. And if you put a little weight on it inside the, uh, the tank, then you know, it'll weight down the tracks and it'll help to flatten them out a bit so they look a bit more realistic and you don't have any floating wheels. So there's that. Uh, and then I have to seal up the hole. And that might be a little finicky because I did notice... Ooh, actually, with the tracks on, you don't notice it anymore. Um, it appeared that the back fenders didn't attach very well, but you know what, now with the tracks on, I can't, I can't see them. So, yeah, alright, glue this together. Um, hmm, maybe I can get some primer on this today.